Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to talk about the Lagrange error bound. It's also called Taylor's theorem. And we're going to use this if we estimate the value of a function with a Taylor polynomial, we're going to be able to give an error boundary. We're going to be able to say how good our approximation is. And here is the formula for the Lagrange error bound. It says the absolute value of your error is less than or equal to this m over n plus 1 factorial times x minus a to the n plus 1. I still want you to think about this as the next term. n plus 1 is the next term after we have estimated our polynomial out to a certain number of terms. And m is some value that is the absolute value of the next derivative at x and we're going to think about m as maximizing the next derivative. So this is the maximum value of the next derivative on that interval. I'm going to give you a physical application of this in class but for now we're just going to call that the maximum value. So let's just take a look at an example. Now again a this is your center and x is just x. x is going to be our variable for now. This is how far away we can go from our center. So let's take a look at an example of this. What's the maximum possible error of the 100th Taylor polynomial of f of x equals e to the x centered at x equals 0 on the interval from negative 10 to 10? Well, using that Lagrange form of the error, I'm going to have the maximum value, I'm going to say the absolute value of my error, is less than or equal to the maximum value, we're just going to call that m for now, over n plus 1 factorial. Now here, n is 100. So I'm going to have n plus 1 factorial. And this is going to be times x minus a, where a is 0, to the 101st power. So there's the form. What I have to do now is figure out what m is. Now, m is the maximum value of the next derivative. So I need the maximum value of the 101st derivative of e to the x. So let's see if we know that. Do we know the 101st derivative? Well, this would be e to the x because first derivative is e to the x, second derivative is e to the x. It's just going to be e to the x. How big can this get on the interval from negative 10 to 10? Maximize e to the x between negative 10 to 10. Well, if you know the graph of e to the x, you know it looks something like this. And if you look from negative 10 to 10, how large can it get? Well, it's going to be right out here. That is going to be e to the 10th. That's the largest that function can get on that interval. So e to the 10th is going to be replaced with m e to the tenth is the maximum value of that derivative over now what is n? n is 100 so 100 plus 1 factorial is 101 factorial now what's, let's look at the worst case scenario our center is 0 how far can I get away from 0? I can get at least 10 away so the worst I can get is out here to 10 10 is that's the distance from the center to where we can approximate it to the 101st power. We are saying that our error is going to be smaller than that. And I've got this little screen shade to look at it. Let's see how we did. Well, that's exactly what we have. And this is about 2.3367 times 10 to the negative 55th. That is a really, really small number. That's a really, really small number. That means that you can approximate e to any number between negative 10 and 10 with the 100th Taylor polynomial, and you know that you will be less than this error. Let's take a look at another example. Now, I took our quiz that you're supposed to take, and I want to show you what this answer was and why. Got a question here that says, assume that f is a function such that the absolute value of the nth derivative of x is always less than or equal to 1. This tells you that m equals 1. Sometimes that's just given to you for all n and x. Sine and cosine functions, by the way, have this property. Anytime you're dealing with sine and cosine, the maximum value of that next derivative is always less than or equal to 1. So you can replace m with 1 if you're dealing with sine and cosine. 
Now estimate the error if the, if the sixth degree Taylor polynomial at one third is used to approximate f of one third. So I'm going to assume that our center here is zero. If our center is zero, let's take a look at our, La, our Lagrange form of the error. That would be the maximum value of that next derivative over n plus one factorial times one third minus zero to the seventh. You see how these, um, I guess I need to, I'll replace the n with the six here in a second. Let's go ahead and do that now. m over seven factorial times one third minus zero to the seventh. So you see how I've, we stopped at six, so these are both sevens. And I centered it at zero and I went as far away as one third from zero. So that's the distance from my center. Now this m is equal to one from what they're telling us right here. So that's why my answer for this problem was b. Now let's take a look at an example I've got to use my calculator. This again is a question and they're telling me that m is always less than or equal to one. Find the least integer n for which the nth degree Taylor polynomial at 5 approximates f of 5 to within point 1. Now this means that m over n plus 1 factorial times x minus 0 to the n plus 1 worked out to be less than point 1. So I'm going to have to play around with this a little bit. Now my m is 1. But I do not know what my n plus 1 factorial is. So I'm going to keep that as n plus 1 factorial. And then how far am I getting away from my center? I'm getting 5 away from my center. So I'm going to replace this with 5 to the n plus 1. And I need that to be smaller than 0.1. So let's go take a look at my calculator and see what I did here. I'm going to scooch it over here. All right. So the first thing I did is I replaced n with 11. Why did I choose 11? Because over here, 11 is the smallest choice. So if you put 11 in for n, you can see what I did there. That's 5 to the 12th over 12 factorial. Now that works out to be 0.5. I guess I'm just guessing checking here. That's not good enough. So then let's try the next one. What about 5 to the 14th over 14 factorial. If n is 13, n plus 1 is 14. So 5 to the 14th divided by 14. By the way, diamond divide gives you that. And I think that was Annie that figured that out. And I have to do diamond enter. If I gave the wrong credit there, I'm sorry, but I can't remember. Anyway, and this error is less than 0.1. So that's why my n was 13. All right, now let's just take a look at the Lagrange form of the, of the remainder. You'll be asked this on your quiz. The Lagrange form of the remainder. This is not asking you to find the error. It just tells somebody a formula or a form so they can figure it out for themselves. The Lagrange form of the remainder is simply the next derivative at C over n plus 1 factorial times x minus a to the n plus 1. And the, when we actually did the error, we had to maximize this, and we replaced that with an m. But when you just find the Lagrange form of the remainder, you just find the next derivative, plug in a c, and then you put it in this formula. Now let's take a look at an example. What is the Lagrange form of the remainder for e to the 2x? And what is the a? Well, the a is the center, and the n is the degree. So my Lagrange form of the remainder would look like this. I need the sixth derivative of e to the 2x. Why did I say 6? Because if n is 5, n plus 1 equals 6. So I need the sixth derivative of e to the 2x. Now the sixth derivative centered where? Centered at 0 is going to be e to the 2x times 2 to the 6. Now why is that? Well the first derivative f prime would be 2 e to the 2x. f double prime because of the chain rule would be 4 e to the 2x. And each time we're going to be multiplying by 2 again. So the 6 derivative must be 2 to the 6 e to the 2x. That's the n plus 1 derivative at, well I guess I need to have this at c. So I'm going to replace my x with c in just a minute. And now we're going to put that over what? 
we put that over n plus 1 factorial, where n is 5, so that's going to be over 6 factorial, and then times x to what power? Well, x to the 6. Those are going to match. And let's go see how we did. That is our answer. So this is the n plus 1 derivative over 6 factorial times x to the 6. Now, if someone were to, wanted to figure out the exact error, they'd have to know how far you went away from the center, and they'd have to maximize that derivative. Let's take a look at one more example. Here I'm going to have a center of 4. My f of x is the square root of x, and my degree is 3. So I need to find which derivative. I need the n plus 1th derivative. All right, so here we go. What is f prime? Well, f prime is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. What is f double prime? f double prime is negative 1 fourth x to the negative 3 halves. Now what's the next derivative? Well the third derivative is 3 eighths x to the negative 5 halves. And I need one more derivative because I need to find the fourth derivative. So that's going to be the fourth derivative is negative 15 sixteenths x to the negative 7 halves, which can be written as negative 15, my bar didn't show up, I probably didn't even do it, over 16 x to the 7 halves power. That's the fourth derivative of that function. Now what else do we need here? We also need x minus a to what power? x minus a to the fourth power, right? And then what is our a? Our a is 4. So I guess I can say x minus 4 to the 4th. And we're going to divide all of this by what? n plus 1 factorial. I'm running out of room because I already have my answer here. I'll show you why it simplifies to that in a minute. Over 4 factorial. Okay, now what we have is that. I'm going to simplify this by dropping the 16 down here with the 4 factorial. So I'm going to have negative 15 x minus 4 to the 4th over now 16 times 4 factorial works out to be 384 x to the 7 halves power and if you simplify this you get that now then this is just the lagrange form of the remainder it's not doesn't tell you the error the error would have to come in if you knew how far away we were coming we were approximating from our center so you'll answer several questions like this on your quiz, and I'm going to give you a physical example of why this is important um, in class tomorrow. So I will see you guys then.